Okay, so since I've had this question asked a lot, I'm going to attempt to show how to get CMY to work with an RGB uh, DMX fixture. So in order to do this, I'm using just the basic uh, fixture I have here. Um, it's patch to one one, so I have a very simple DMX patch that um, is just literally RGB, and I patched a few of them. And then the only other thing that I did to this is I changed some of the light intensity settings and put a the dimmer default value to one. So that way, when I um, go and play, once it initializes, like you know, I gotta I touch the value to get it to initialize. And then I get red, green, and blue. Right, easy enough. So now the goal is to make one of these that does CMY using the same channels. Um, so in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is make a copy of this fixture and edit it to just kind of show the process. So I will grab the light fixture, I'm gonna go in and grab the static head, make a copy of it, um, put it inside this folder, and I'm gonna name this underscore CMY. And this is gonna be the one I'm gonna work on. So just kind of quickly to show like a little bit of what's going on here, there's really not a whole lot <laughs> in this blueprint. Um, and really the only thing that's happening um, pretty often is this on fixture patch receive push these values, right? So all that's doing is grabbing the things that are in the components, push it, doing some math on them and pushing them to these materials that are over here. Um, and based on what um, I want to do, I can tackle this one or two ways. I could either tackle it in the component, I could tackle it right here, or I could do it in the materials. So I'll kind of show the idea. Um, so the first thing I want to look at is this color component, because that's actually what's driving the RGB. So again, if I go back to my fixture content, I'm going to go in light fixtures, components, grab the color component, copy it, put it in here. And again, I'm going to rename this guy underscore CMY. When I open this up, again, it's very simple function. Uh, we're just getting the parent, setting a light color, setting a couple parameters on the material itself. So I'm just going to attack it right here. And I'm gonna break the linear color. Now the easy cheater function, of course, for this is just to subtract one from everything, All right? So I'm gonna do float minus float. And I'm gonna put one in here duplicate this a couple times and there we go so one minus red will give me cyan magenta uh, yellow right then I need to just make a linear color structure again right uh, so I'll just go make linear linear color and plug these guys back in all right so I'm just inverting the channels and we don't do anything with the alpha channel. So then I need to plug that into here and this into here. And that should be good for this component. All right, so in order to make this work though, I need to put this on my um, fixture. So I'm going to, with the color component selected already, I'm just gonna disable that one since we're not gonna use it and then add on the CMY version. Now this one, I do wanna make sure it's enabled. I wanna make sure my dimmer component is set to default of one so that something will happen. And then I'm also gonna set these values to match the other one so and they look the same. And I think actually I changed the zoom as well, just to like 15, just to make it look a little, a little nicer. So I will pull this stack head out and put it next to um, my other one, patch it the same, put it in channel one. And now in theory, if I've done all this correctly and I play here, this is what I'm gonna get. So one's off, one's on, that kind of makes sense. If I touch the values on this, now we'll kind of see what's happening, right? So I get um, red and green, right? And blue and yellow, so something is wrong here <laughs> because I should be able to get uh, all three of them working. Um, so I shouldn't get this um, red and green. I should actually have red and cyan here. 
So somewhere in here I've done a mistake and it looks like I plugged this in incorrectly. Um, so I will make sure that it's one minus everything and save that and run this sucker again. So now I got uh, red and cyan, good. Green and magenta, good. Blue and yellow, good. So now that's cool. And if I put everything up, exactly what should happen, right? Full CMY is black, full RGB is white, and I would bring them all down, vice versa, right? Simple enough. So the only, um, I won't say it's a downside, but one of the things to note about this is of course, like this is doing blueprint math, so it's being done CPU. So depending on what your bottleneck is, you know, doing this math every frame, if there's like hundreds of these fixtures, that might not be the best um, scenario, but it is very easy to understand and to implement. Um, you can do this and then you can reuse the CMY component on other fixtures um, and it'll work um, just the same as long as you um, have it on and it's a fixture that's capable of using CMY. Um, the other way to tackle this though um, is in the materials, right? Because as I said before, we're just kind of taking these values inside this function here, we're doing some math and then we're applying them to these uh, materials. So knowing that I actually could tackle this here technically, I could break this, uh, do a find and mess with the RGB, do the math, recombine it. Um, a little more complicated, so I didn't go that route. Um, but I could also tackle these in the material. So for the sake of uh, brevity, I'm just going to do the beam material for now, but it would work the same in um, the spotlight and the lens. And the reason there's three of them is there's the beam material. The spotlight actually just deals with when the light hits something. We're using the light function to like draw the circle on the ground or whatever it hits. And then the lens itself has a material as well. So we can kind of show it when it's a miss, right? So let's go grab the material that we need. Uh, light fixture materials. And then these are the instances. So what I actually want is the master. So I'll start with the beam master. Copy that guy. And we'll change this to um, underscore CMY. All right. And I'll open this up and we'll take a look at what this what's in here. Now this might look somewhat intimidating, um, but really the only thing we're concerned about actually is this parameter here, DMX color. This is actually what sets the color of the light. It's just a material parameter. And actually, if we look at this um, more deeply inside the, uh, you know, what we did in our component, that's what we're doing here is actually just setting this color, right? With this value that we're pushing into it. Um, however, it's just that math is extremely fast inside the shader as opposed to doing it on the CPU, right? So there's nothing really wrong with doing it this way. However, I just wanted to kind of show you a different thought if you wanted to do it here instead. Um, so since I have this, really, I can just go in here. I can do one minus, right? So white would give me black. Just plug this guy in here. Apply this save it. So then in order to demonstrate this, what I'm actually going to do is make a, another copy of this. And I'll call this one CMY underscore mat. So we can remember that this is the one we did it in the material. All right. And I'll put this in, patch it the same. And then what I'm going to do is replace this beam instance with this one. Um, so just to be thorough, I'll create a material instance and I'll call it beam CMI, right? So we have material instance. I will go in, this is my material one, right? I'll search for CMI. That's the one I want. So now I've replaced it. Now, when I hit play, in theory, I'm going to get the same result in the two on the right here, right? That's what I'm hoping for anyway. Um, so when I open up this thing, again, I gotta do something to get the values to kind of do what they do. And so now when I bring this up, I got red, green, 
blue, right? But that's not really what I was after. There should be something else happening on this one on the right because I did this CMY thing, right? Like what's what's happening? Um, I wasn't really paying attention when I did this initially and um, I still have the other color component enabled, I think, <laughs> or something else is still going on that is preventing this from working. So I got a green blue here, I have this thing, I have a beam and let me see. Dmx color is one minus. This should be fine. Ah, okay, that's exactly what's happening. So I'm still using the CMY component instead of the regular color component, and so I've inverted it twice. So I actually want to just use the regular RGB if I'm going to use the material uh, in order to do this, and that should solve my problem. So now again, when I um, mess with value, right? So now I have red, two cyans, uh, magentas, and yellows, right? So what I was saying earlier is that since there are three materials that are in charge of this, uh, when I bring this up, you can see how the lens turns red it's because I didn't change the material for the lens. Also, if I were to um, grab this light and flip it upside down so that you'll see the light function is what draws this circle on the ground. Um, Again, it's just a material type of hit play. I'm going to get the same thing out of the circle where it's going to be backwards, right? So in order to actually make this work, I, what I would need to do is um, copy all three of those materials and make that same adjustment. So it may seem like that that's um, kind of a lot of work, but it's technically not a bad way to do it. I mean, really, we could make this much nicer, put a static switch in here, make it so that on the master material itself, you could say, okay, am I using uh, CMY or RGB? And based on that, it would pick a path. Um, again, there's lots of different ways to tackle this, but I just kind of wanted to give a couple of examples. And that way, um, hopefully this will make it a little easier and also kind of show a little what what's going on under the hood, because this is really what sets, you know, what makes the light work at the end of the day is like this beam ray march for the beam. Then again, we'll just, I'll open it up really quickly. Uh, if I go into the materials, we have one for the lens and one for the light, right? So if I copy, let's just copy both of these and we can edit them really quickly. All right, so we'll, again, we'll say CMY and CMY. So we got our lens master. So same thing, a little bit of math going on on the lens, but we'll notice the same parameter. It's the identical parameter, right? Um, so we could do the exact same thing here. We could put a one minus, put that in here, done. And then on the lights master, which is for the spot on the floor, same thing, we should see this, um, a similar thing going on here. But I don't though, which is kind of an interesting thing to note. Why not? Why is there not a color in here? Well, because the, actually the color isn't set here. This is only dealing with the gobo and the dimmer and the shrub. The color of that is actually set in the light itself that is on the, um, the, uh, like, like on the blueprint. So if I open this one up, it's actually done from the spotlight. Like whatever this color is, this light color is what creates that. So this m method isn't going to work 100% anyway, because inside that component um, that I was uh, playing with earlier, this light color is actually what sets the color of the light function when it hits the ground. So, I could do something interesting where I like overrode it or something like that, but ultimately um, I would have to do this math here just to set this light color because it's not going to work in this case here. Um, again, there's kind of, um, I could definitely um, force it to work, but that's just kind of um, a side note about this, that the color isn't actually set here, it's set from the light itself. So hopefully this kind of gave some, a um, little bit of, um, knowledge as well as to like kind of how the underpinnings of the fixture work 
Um, again, there's nothing that prevents me from editing any of these other components to do other kinds of things that I wanted to do. Technically speaking, this has come up as well, the idea of multiple gobo wheels, right? Like how do we have multiples of those? Well, again, if I look inside the Beam Master, I can kind of just see like what's going on as to like what's causing this. So this, um, there's gobo numbers and indexes and things like that that are happening here, but really like what, what I would want to do, like if I'm just like, it's just grabbing an index number. There's nothing that would actually prevent me from adding another one of these in here and multiplying it before it goes in, right? So I could create a second Gobo component, um, make a, you know, increment it by one, um, and then do some um, multiplying or adding, depending on what you're doing. Um, I think in this case, I would probably add and then clamp. Um, and then just shove it in here, right? Because it just needs to be done on the front end. Um, so, and then you have to do a second one for frosted as well, right? But this is kind of the magic. Like obviously this is a, um, some shader math that uh, is what's driving it, but we can definitely affect these inputs of it fairly easily um, and um, change the behavior of the light. Some other things that you know to note like this is how you can actually affect the beam quality as well Like this is how we did it in the uh, uh, moment factory sample was to um, Basically attack this right here. So right now based on what you have it set at this will pick a quality setting but you could just override this and do some other math to drive the quality setting so uh, hopefully this helps and we'll definitely kind of come out with some more of these, I hope, in the future.